I was two months into a new job working the front desk at a retirement community, and things were going well, when all of a sudden one day, ah, I hear a very loud yell in the lobby. I look up to see a man sitting in one of the lobby chairs, and he was shaking. He was having a seizure. His whole body was shaking so violently that he was beginning to slip off of the chair onto the floor. At the front desk, it was my responsibility to notify other staff of emergencies, and so as I was doing that, the executive director rushes past and says, call 911. I go, and they were currently experiencing a high call volume, which was great, I thought. The executive director then yells out, bring me the AED. I'm standing there scrambling, put the phone down on the desk, grab the AED, run it over to her, run back, and I was still on hold. At this point, I'm very overwhelmed. I am shaking, my heart's racing, my adrenaline's pumping. When the operator finally gets on the line, I try to answer the, best, the, the questions as best as I can. At this point, other staff has begun to come and, and address the situation. And then later on, the EMTs and the ambulance show up. Uh, the, the person who, who this was regarding was not responding. And, so it was very, very overwhelming. I had never experienced a situation like that, never had to respond to an emergency like that. So as I turned to go back to the front desk, I was just on the verge of tears. <coughs> My manager was standing there, and as soon as I looked at her, I just started crying. I covered my face in embarrassment, and she looked at me and she said, Amanda, why don't you go take a break? Take as long as you need. I'll be here. Just go take a break. And in that moment, I wanted to say no. Because the last thing I wanted to show my manager is that I couldn't handle the situation that I was supposed to handle. And this is the reason why I tell that story, is because in that moment, I thought to myself, oh, I'm fine. I just need a moment to collect myself, take a deep breath. I'll be OK. How often do we take on that mindset of uh, just when life hits us, we, we take it and we push on. We take the hit of life and just buckle up and, and push on. I want to, you know, and sometimes, sorry, let me slow down here. <laughs> sometimes, you know, we have to take the hits of life and we have to buckle on. And, like, that's, that's our only option. But when we are presented with the opportunity to take a moment and to, to process things, how often do we forego that opportunity? And so I want to talk today about creating space, and space for ourselves and space for others. But before, I think before we can create space for others, we really need to create space for ourselves. Um, because we can't give something that we don't possess. Um, and in this world that is super fast-paced and just always go, 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 accomplish, succeed, do this, be this, do more, be more, in this world where nothing ever seems to be enough, this is something that I know I really want to lean into and, and live into to to slow down and be able to process every now and then. How many of you would agree that uh, you are your own worst critic? How many of you would agree that you are hardest on yourself, that, you, that your self-talk, I should say, is oftentimes negative? That's me too. <laughs> In fact, I went to counseling for a little bit, and the, number, the very first thing that my counselor told me was, you need to practice self-compassion. <laughs> Consider practicing being kind to yourself. And that's, that's exactly, in a nutshell, what I mean by creating space for ourselves. It's, it's taking a moment to practice self-compassion. Rather than being critical or judgmental of ourselves or uh, really hard on ourselves, it's filtering our life and filtering our experiences, our thoughts, our emotions through the lens of compassion, empathy, understanding towards ourself, and uh, grace. So creating space for other people, I don't think it has to be like this really grand thing, a grandiose event or gesture. Um, it can be really simple. As, For example, uh, 
my coworker walking around the front desk after someone says, you know, I'm waiting, waiting on the results of a, a mammogram, and she starts to tear up. And she just, you know, walks around the desk and gives her a hug and just holds her there for a second. Just like simple little things like that. Um, I went to a event, a weekend organized event a couple years ago, and um, at this event, there's like 40 people. People would get up and they would share in, in front of these, this group of people. And anytime the person speaking would start to get emotional or they, what they were sharing was difficult for them to share, everybody in the room would stand up. And they would stand up for as long as that person needed and for as long as that person was sharing. And the message behind that was to tell the speaker, though you felt alone in that situation, you felt alone in that hurt or that pain, I, I see you, I acknowledge you, and I stand with you right now in this moment. And that's something that I will never, ever forget about that weekend because it was really powerful. It was really powerful to have a room full of people stand with you. Ah, now I'm getting emotional. Um, when, you're, when you're struggling to share something. And I think creating space for other people is as simple as that. It's as simple as saying to someone, I see you, I acknowledge you, and I stand with you. And so that's something that I really want to lean into in my life. And in this crazy busy world, um, I know that I need to practice that with myself, giving myself grace and understanding so that I can go out and, and give that to other people. I heard it said once that you can only be as empathetic with other people as you are with yourself. You can only relate to other people's story, other people's pain, um, to the degree that you're willing to look at and embrace your own. And so that is my, uh, my goal. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you.